Hey, hey ladies, Julie Graham here, and we're gonna top, stop and take a couple seconds and pray for our husbands. So if you've ever seen any of the videos I've done on this topic before, you'll kinda know what I'm talking about. If you're brand new, let me just give you the two second skinny. So I've been married to my husband for almost 10 years. Next month will be 10 years. We've been together since college, which is 13 years next week. Um, so we've been together long enough um, for me to learn a thing or two about the difficulty and um, honestly the, the highs and lows of being married. And so um, I discovered um, probably about two years into being married just that the, the magazines and the blogs, although let's be real, I was not reading blogs when I was um, engaged, um, but kind of that idea of what's shared about marriage um, you know, in the mainstream is um, maybe a little less practical than the advice you need when you're actually legit married, um, especially when it comes to being in the church. I find um, the circle that I run in, having um, been being a part of a really great church um, and having the opportunity to work at that church for um, literally a decade, I, I had access to a lot of people who um, were really honest about um, a godly marriage. Yet, I look at society and culture and I see that the attitude is kind of um, marriage should make you happy and if and when it doesn't, it's your spouse's fault and you deserve better. So if you're not happy, then you don't have to be married anymore. Like just go be happy. Um, and that I feel like is, is just kind of the culture of the day. And yet, as a Christian, I find that that's not at all what God says to me about how my marriage is to work. Um, he actually says that I'm meant to glorify him in my marriage, um, that my wife, my job as a wife, my role as a wife, is one of the primary ways um, that I can represent Christ um, to the people around me. Um, it's one of the primary ways that God is going to sharpen me. And that, ladies, let me tell you, it has been truer than true. Um, and it's one of the ways that I um, just find that my relationship with God grows the most. The more I lean into Him um, through the ups and downs of marriage, um, the more he refines me and really teaches me more about himself. So um, I, I've said that, you know, in the 10 years that I've been married, several of them were difficult. And I think it really comes down to expectations. We expect that our husband will make us happy. We expect that our husband will do everything that the Bible says a husband should do if you're married to a Christian. Um, and the truth is, is that's just not how life works all the time. Um, I don't obey God in every single area and every single day, and I don't live up to every single scripture that is written to me as a wife on a daily basis. I fail regularly, continually, um, horribly, um, and so does my husband. And so if my hope is caught up in my marriage fulfilling all of, my husband fulfilling all of my needs and all of my happiness is caught up in whether or not he's doing what I think he should do, then I'm in trouble. So, because I discovered that early on, I realized, wow, I really need to change my thinking about the purpose of my marriage. Um, and that's going to be a daily process for me, remembering that when I get up, just like I have to remind myself of the truth of the gospel every day, regardless of whether I'm married or not, I need to remind myself of the truth of the gospel that I'm never going to be good enough for God, but that he loves me completely and fully because of what Jesus did for me, I can take that attitude into my marriage. So if you've been following this series, so to speak, at all for the last couple weeks, you maybe know that my husband um, has been um, struggling the last couple weeks and then this last week had a close friend of his die, um, which has been very difficult. Um, a close friend of his who's really been a positive impact, influence impact on his life um, and you know, a gentleman who honestly we're not sure where he stood with God. And so that makes the passing of a friend even more difficult. Um, and so um, I had just kind of had said the last couple days that um, it was obvious that in the difficulty my husband was experiencing with losing his friend, um, he, it, it's been affecting us as a couple. So just being real, it's affecting us as a, as a, us as a couple because my husband is literally um, in a season of grief and mourning. He's missing his friend, um, and you know it was a friend that 
I didn't spend a ton of time with, but I, I knew him and I, and I loved and respected this friend, but Paul had a really close relationship with him um, and you know has, has had some difficulty in being um, connected with me over the loss of this friend. So anyways, all that to say, last couple days, there's been some friction, there's been some lack of communication, there's been some frustration. Anyone ever experienced those things? If you've been married for more than 48 hours, you probably have. <laughs> um, so that's kind of what's been happening in our house and honestly, we're just in the, in the middle of a little funk, of a little, you know, um, shortness of words and frustration toward each other. Some silent treatment is going on. Oh, it's so fun. Um, again, just keeping it real. And so um, I'm thinking about you guys and thinking how I've committed to this daily practice of honestly going to God on behalf of my marriage and on behalf of my husband. And then I've decided to take you all along on the journey, um, being real. And so there are days when you know you need to pray for your husband and yet you're frustrated with him or you're you're mad at him or he's mad at you and the last thing you want to do in your flesh is to stop and pray for him and so I've been doing this habit <laughs> I've been doing this habit for this habit of praying for my husband and, and sharing it um, for I think it's at least been maybe eight or nine months and there have been probably a handful of times like you could probably count them on a hand maybe both hands would be necessary um, to say there have been days where I'm like but I'm mad at him today so I don't want to do it but that's when the Lord reminds me like literally the Holy Spirit is like it is not about you <laughs> it is not about you it is not even about him him being my husband it's about honoring God in my marriage um, thanks ladies you're amazing um, and so it doesn't matter if I'm mad at my husband or he's mad at me. I'm still supposed to go to God with all of my frustrations, all of my um, disappointments, all of my issues. And so if there are issues in my marriage, and I believe that my marriage is supposed to be the primary personal relationship that I have with another human, then you better believe when I'm annoyed, frustrated, disappointed, upset, overwhelmed, whatever you want to call it in my marriage, I cannot do what my flesh wants to do, which is forget it, Forget him, forget all about it. I am not praying for him. That does nothing. It does nothing good for him. It does nothing good for me. It actually is just allowing me to allow, um, it's just allowing me to let bitterness separate us even further. And so, even though my husband is currently frustrated with me, I don't know, he may or may not watch this, <laughs> um, I wanna stop and pray for him because the truth is, I've gotta pray for him anyway because I need God to change my heart toward him in this hopefully very short difficult season um, because I want to honor God in my marriage and I want to serve my husband and I know I know without a shadow of a doubt that part of the reason we're having this difficulty is that because right now he's literally mourning the loss of a friend so if I can just remove myself for a hot minute from the situation I can recognize that my husband doesn't need me to return the silent treatment with silent treatment which is a temptation, but instead to seek the Lord via prayer, via reading his word, and via counsel of you know wise women who will encourage me to do those things and not encourage me that I deserve better or whatever um, you know is common in culture, but to say, what does God want you to do in, in this moment? Have you prayed for him? Um, what are some scriptures that come to mind that can um, you know, inform your thinking and inform your words toward him? Um, so I've got to be the kind of wife that's going to pray for my husband even when it's difficult. And I'm totally trying to apply this right now in my own life as I'm saying it to you. Um, I'm trying to read your comment there, Mariah. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah, it's so true. It's very hard to train our minds, honestly, um, to do the right thing even when we feel like we're justified in doing the fleshly thing. But that's what God wants from us. That's living um, a Christ-centered life. Um, and I wanted to say, honestly, that's living a grit and grace life since that's my that's you know one of my taglines as well. Um, so I'm just being honest with you and saying I'm you know in a rough couple days here, week here. Um, and my temptation was to be like, I'll just say I forgot today, but that's not honest and it doesn't help me and it doesn't help you because here's the deal. We are all going to have days like this. We are all going to have days, you know, weeks, patches where there's going to be friction in our home and that the, the temptation is to let it 
fester, let it linger, let it get worse. And instead, we've got to learn to go to God and ask him for the wisdom for what to say, what to not say, when to be still, when to be silent, when to speak a word of wisdom, when to speak a word of love, and when to just pray. So that's one of the biggest things I've learned in my season of being married, in my 10 years of being married. I feel like one of the biggest things I've learned about marriage is that I don't have to say every single thing I think, but I do need to pray like crazy as a wife. So, ooh, Rochelle, throwing out the old uh, Christian cliche, yo, but it's true. Let go and let God. <laughs> um, so with that being said, let us go ahead and pray because I got to go get my toddler. What? Um, hey, ladies, thank you so much for commenting. It's really helpful when I know that you're engaged in what I'm saying. So love all of the comments today. Um, so with that being said, let's go ahead and pray for our husbands, even when we don't want to, because again, our marriage is ultimately not about me. It's definitely not about me. Um, it's definitely not about my husband, but it is about glorifying God. So let's go ahead and pray um, and just ask God to show us how to glorify him, even when we find ourselves um, in less than desirable situations, circumstances, ruts in our marriages. So let's pray. God, thank you so much for who you are and thank you for the fact that your love for us is constant, it's consistent, it doesn't fluctuate, um, it's not based on our circumstances. And so God, I'm so thankful for that truth. I'm so thankful that um, you know every thought I have, you know every, um, every feeling I have, and you don't change your view of or your love for me based on those things that are ever changing um, in my heart and mind. And so even today as I um, struggle with being honest about being in a difficult place as a wife today. I recognize that um, ultimately, um, as cheesy as it sounds, I live for an audience of one. And so I can be honest with you. Um, and there is, um, there's freedom in being honest um, with other um, with other sisters in Christ because truth is is we all need to be honest about the fact that we don't always all have it all together and that's okay that's why you sent Jesus I was never gonna have it all together I was never going to be a perfect wife um, and I really can't even go one whole day without um, without failing in my wifing in some either significant or even um, minuscule way by my standards. And to you, it's all the same. So I'm thankful for the fact that I don't have to be good enough. Um, but instead, because of what you did through Jesus, I can just be honest with you um, and I can come to you and pour my heart out to you. And in doing that, you can turn and change my heart toward my situation. And I can recognize that the truth is, is it is a gift to be a wife. It's a high calling. It's a privilege. It's a grave responsibility. And so um, I'm thankful for the fact that you've given me the spirit who convicts me when I want to go my own way who speaks truth um, that's sometimes difficult and yet also speaks encouragement when I need it most. So I'm thankful for the fact that um, you can you can empower me to be sweet and kind and loving even when it's difficult. So I pray that you would allow me to do that today as a wife, that I would um, choose to um, seek peace with my husband, that I wouldn't allow there to be distance between us for, for a length of time. But I also pray that you would speak to his heart right now, that he would have a desire to seek um, full, uh, oneness in our marriage, that we would be able to talk through um, the things that we're both feeling and the difficulties that um, are currently in between us. And I pray that you would continue to comfort him as he grieves the loss of his friend. And I pray for any other husband who may be going through something difficult um, and that's affecting um, another marriage among my friends, God. Satan would want nothing more than to attack um, our our marriages because it's one of the best ways he can get into, um, into our relationship with you, God, because you say that it's the greatest picture we have on this side of earth, on this side of, of heaven, of what it looks like to be in a perfect relationship with you. And so um, it makes sense that um, the enemy would want our marriages to have these little foxes, to have these little thorns um, that can trip us up and distract us and keep us from wanting to glorify you in this key relationship. But God, I pray you protect us as, as wives from allowing these things to get in the way, that we'd be honest about the fact that they're there We'd, be, we'd find a friend to be honest with that can point us back to Christ, but that we'd also choose, God, to, um, to take your word as truth and to apply it to our lives and to apply it to our wifing, even when it's difficult. And we pray that you would give our husbands that same desire, that they would want to be godly husbands, even when it's difficult, even when it goes against what feels easy in the moment. And so I pray that you would strengthen each and every one of our marriages, that we would, um, that we would put the priority where it belongs, that we would... Um, 
choose to serve and to listen and to be um, present with our husbands and that they would do the very same thing ultimately so that you get glory but that there would be unity in our marriages um, that we would experience fullness in our marriages but that we wouldn't ever seek to find our full satisfaction there that we'd recognize that comes with our relationship with you but that our marriages are a gift and we're meant to glorify you in them so it's in jesus name that we pray all of these things amen amen y'all i don't know why i always end in like a country slang. I don't know. Something's wrong with me. Um, so anyway, just being real today. So if you know anyone who could maybe benefit from some real talk about marriage um, and just an honest time of prayer about their marriage, feel free to pass this on or tag them here. Hey, Amy. Um, but we'll be back tomorrow sometime-ish, probably afternoon-ish tomorrow to pray again for our husbands. And I got a message with a suggestion. So great news. We have a topic for tomorrow, but feel free to message me, um, private message, or even comment here on the video some other topics you'd like to see covered in the future because um, we really do want to cover every every nook and cranny of our marriage repeatedly over and over, but also touching on the different things that might be happening in your life and your marriage. And I won't say your name. If you come up with a topic, don't, I won't be like, and Rochelle said, we're going to pray. She needs prayer for X, Y, Z. I won't do that unless you tell me you want me to. So anyways, thanks for praying. Feel free to share this video, but otherwise I'll see y'all tomorrow.